Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning, and Marine. In this video, I'm, in, uh, I'm gapping the piston rings on a 3.0 liter Mercruiser four cylinder engine. The piston rings I'm using are male um, 51240CP.030, 30 thousandths over piston rings. The instructions in the box call for the uh, gap to be. 0 0.004 times every inch of bore. So this is a four inch bore, so that would be 0 0.016. I did this exact same thing on the 5.7, but the uh, the hyper you take the pistons that I'm using, which are, these, these are uh, Civil Light pistons, Hypertex 3493HC. The HC means Hypertech and, uh, excuse me, um, Hyper Eutectic encoded. And these pistons require a 40% larger gap. So 0 0.016 times 40% is again 0 0.022. So I gapped the first rings at 0 0.022 and I had to file them because they were only about uh, 16, 15 thousandths when I first measured them. So I filed them. I have a um, homemade ring filer. It's just a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel and I turn it on really fast. And then I just grind one edge of the ring and grind it down. So um, the rings are already on the, the first gap. This box tells you which gap they go into. The top groove, I've already, grew, uh, I've already filed those down to a 0 0.022, all of them. And uh, as I said in previous videos, I number them with a Roman numeral. This is number four of which cylinder they came out of because I put them back in the same cylinder. Probably shouldn't matter, but it's just how I do it. So now I've got the second ring. Uh, the second rings uh, in here and I've just checked them and they are all at 0 0.016 all four of them and um, the instructions for the civil light piston say you don't have to increase the second ring gap by 40% just the first one since the factory specifications for Mercruiser 3.0 is 0 0.010 to 0 0.020 the second rings fall within the right specifications so I'm not going to file them at all I'm leave them like they are at 0 0.016 so that's the first rings, the second rings, and now I'm gapping the oil control rings. I've never had a problem with these being gapped, but I'm gonna check them just in case. And um, then I'll put the rings on the piston and install the pistons. Okay, I have now finished um, gapping the oil control rings and all of them were at 0 0.022 or greater. So they're all safe. So I'm about to take them out and uh, put them over there and start putting the rings on the pistons. I don't show that. I have other videos that show that. I'll link that to the, in the description of this video. Um, the other thing I was going to say on the second ring gap, uh, as I've said in the previous video, I number them with uh, Arabic numerals, what type of people used to, one, two, three, four, just so I can distinguish them from the top rings, which are Roman numerals. That way, if I get them mixed up, I'll know which is which. And I always, I, I don't know, I've always done it, but I put them back in the bore that I measured them in. It's just a, just a habit I've done for all these years. All right, I'm now uh, prepping to install the piston. So what I've done is I've wiped a little bit of oil, just a film of oil on the number one cylinder. I don't want it dripping off the uh, cylinder. I just uh, coat it with a little oil just so it's not dry. Um, I like to use this, uh, it's a syringe and I get it from work. It's actually part of a uh, Legionella test kit, to be honest with you, but um, it's a large syringe. So I use it to administer I can administer very small drops of oil without it going everywhere, uh, unlike a oil, squirt oil can, which you pull it a little bit and it shoots everywhere. So um, I put oil on the, on the cylinder and now I prep my piston and rod. So I've got the bearing shell in place. I've got these two rubber uh, hose pieces that hold, they kind of hold the bearing in and they protect the crankshaft as I got it down. And not only that, these also um, are notched so they don't get pinched between the bearing and the uh, and the uh, crankshaft when it goes down in there. So, um, so what I do is I take the uh, piston, hold it horizontal like this, I rotate the rings till the gaps are straight up. Then I fill the gaps with oil and then I also put a little bit of oil on the oil control ring right there. And then I hold the piston vertically like this and I rotate the oil rings around several times. Actually, I hold the ring, I hold the ring steady and I rotate the piston, kind of a reverse way of doing it. but. Um, that's just to distribute a little bit of oil in the grooves itself because these grooves are, are sealed. They're kind of sealed inside that piston. So, or excuse me, sealed inside that cylinder. So 
until you actually run this thing for a while, they don't really get a whole lot of oil in there. So um, I'm about to install this first piston and I'll show you how to do that when I get in the hole. Okay, I've now all the, the grooves and I've placed the piston down the hole and it's resting on the oil control ring inside the bore. So at this point, um, I like what I do is I stagger my rings. Like for example, the gap on the bottom ring you see is right there. So it's pointing frontwards or forwards. And the top ring gap is pointing to the back. So you want to stagger your ring gap so the ring gaps are not right on top of each other. Because the gases that go past the first ring have to go all the way around 180 degrees to get it to pass the second ring. So that's so you want to stagger those. And also stagger I stagger my oil control rings. I don't think it's that important, but like I'll have one over here and one over there, it doesn't really matter where. But um, so I'll stagger the rings. So at this time, I'm gonna put the, uh, here's my ring compressor. I'm gonna open it up, put it over the piston, and then tighten it down a little bit, not a lot, just enough to put a little friction on the rings. And then I reach underneath the engine and I push the piston up about a half an inch to three quarter of an inch up inside the ring compressor. And that gets the rings fully up inside the compressor. And then you can't compress the bottom ring in this state because the ring compressor won't grab that bottom ring. So you gotta get them up inside the ring compressor. So once it's up inside the ring compressor, then I go ahead and tighten the ring compressor all the way down until it's fully compressed. And then I just take the end of a, either a wooden hammer or a rubber, the uh, handle of a hammer. It's got to be wood or rubber. Don't hit it with steel. But hit it with a, a rubber hammer or rubber handle of a hammer and just tap the piston on down in the bore. And then once the piston gets in the bore, the ring compressor will pop free. Make sure you're holding the ring compressor because it'll pop loose and fly off and maybe fall on the floor. You don't want to get it dirty. Um, part, of, part of engine building is trying to keep things relatively clean. You don't have to keep it dust free, but you do need to keep it grit free. You don't need to have any grit or sand or any, any kind of abrasive material on your parts. A little bit of dust and air is okay, but um, gritty material is not okay. Okay, as you can see, the uh, ring compressor is now fully on the piston and it's fully compressed. The piston is pushed up inside the ring compressor approximately half an inch. And now all the rings have been squished and uh, compressed completely. And, uh, I've got the ring compressor about as tight as I can get it. And that's, I, I, there's little notches on here so it clicks as you tighten it. And I keep tightening until I can't get any more clicks. So at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and tap this um, piston down. Now technically I'm supposed to keep my hand on the ring compressor as I do this, but I'll try without using my hand. So I'm gonna tap it down with the end of a rubber hammer. I just felt the oil, the oil control rings just went fully in and now it's compression rings. They're easier because they're wider. There it goes. We can go in. It's fully in. And that's how you that's how you knock a piston into the bore. So now the ring presser is free. I can set it over here. And now this time I go ahead and push the piston all the way down with my hands till it meets the crank and you do it very gently. You don't want to slam it into the crank. You just push it steadily and slowly until it uh, joins the crank. Then I flip the engine over push the rod back down, put some oil between the crank and the bearing, and then push the rod or pull the rod back up. Okay, as you can see, the rod is now fully engaged with the crankshaft. These two rubber hoses guided the, uh, the rod onto the crank without hitting it, hitting it with any metal and without damaging. So I pushed the uh, piston all the way down until the uh, rod mates with the crank. And it's just, right now it's metal on metal contact. I haven't put any oil in there. So what I'm gonna do is pull these two rubber hoses off and push the piston back down just a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch at the most. You don't want to push it so far down that these rod, these, these bolts will contact this journal here. Just enough to create a crack where you can squirt oil down in between the bearing and the crankshaft. Okay, I pushed the, uh, I pulled the rubber hoses off. I pushed the rod back down about an eighth of an inch, almost a quarter of an inch to create a gap between the bearing and the uh, journal. Put some oil on either side, let it run down by gravity in behind the uh, crankshaft pin there, and then pull the rod back up to pull the bearing against the crank and that put lubrication on it. So now I'm about to put a few more drops of oil on the top and then put the, uh, this is the upper, this is the other side, of the, this is the rod cap. I haven't put the bearing in there. I'll do that in just a second. But uh, once I get the bearing in there and put the rod cap back on, I'll tighten them up and uh, torque them to uh, the factory specification, which I'll let you know what that is in a minute. Okay, I've now installed the bearing in the rod cap put the rod cap on and by the way the orientation is that the uh, there's some little notches in the in the cap and in the rod that help align the bearing there's a little like little uh, notch in the bearing that fits in another recess notch in the, in the rod and in the cap 
and the both of the recesses line up to where along the, they're they're both on the same side of the rod. They're on this side right this side where I'm pointing. Also, if you notice, there's a metal, there's two dots on this rod. The two dots point to the same side too. If you if you need to know that too, but um, every engine ever built, the notches on the two halves of the bearing are on the same side of the rod. That's just something you need to know. You got to get that right. Do not reverse them. So. I'm about to torque these two nuts down to 45 foot-pounds. That's what's in the uh, factory specifications. Okay, this piston and rod assembly is now fully installed. I've got both of the nuts uh, tightened up and torqued to 45 foot-pounds. I forgot to mention I do put a drop of oil on each of the bolts for the threads and the torque to go a little easier. So, um, the bearings that I'm using are male... Um, Let's see if we find them here. Mail part number. Where's the part number? Right there. CB1227P on this particular engine. So I'm about to do another special topics video on 3.0 liter engines, and I'll do that for another video. But for now, this engine is, um, um, this video on installing pistons is, is done. Um, I'm not going to show the other three because it's just, it just repeat the process for all four pistons, tight, uh, torque them up, and you're done. So this time I'm going to install the other three pistons and then I'll uh, show you when the engine is right, To conclude this video, the uh, pistons are now installed in this 3.0 liter Merc Cruiser engine and um, all four pistons are in and the uh, rod bolts are, uh, rod bolt nuts are torqued to 45 foot pounds and everything's all good. I've rotated around a couple times and it's, it's kind of odd, the, uh, the way the pistons, the way the crank uh, works with each piston being opposed in the ne next to it. There's a lot of it spins freely when the pistons are at the top of the travel and the bottom of the travel and then it gets hard and it spins freely again. It's, it's kind of an odd, odd feeling but anyway. Um, so at this time I'm going to uh, cover the engine up for the night, wrap this thing up and get at it tomorrow. I'm going to put the cylinder head on tomorrow and then uh, uh, put the oil pan on and then put the valve train in and move right along on this engine. So if you found this video helpful or entertaining or beneficial in any way, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.